Good morning, and great to have you with us. Hi, good morning. Uh, you know, investors were so excited about this young, active base that Robinhood and Coinbase promised, but they've been slow to sort of cross-sell different products. Is that them being slow to the punch, or is it users, not this young base of users, not really buying into it, buying into other products? I think when you talk about, thanks again for having me on the show, when you talk about names like Coinbase, uh, specifically what we're seeing here is we're seeing some worries, not so much the engagement, people are using it very often, but we're seeing more worries uh, from the investor community about shrinking yields or shrinking take rates. And that's what's actually holding the stocks um, kind of backward. Because if you think about their shares in, in Bitcoin or, or elsewhere, they're actually gaining share. So it's you know more volume at a smaller take rate or a smaller spread. And I think that's what's concerning. I think that people are actually still using those apps pretty widely. That's the question. They're using them widely, but I mean, if you think about the transaction costs, the take rate that they're getting, that is likely set to decline, right? And the whole premise is that they're going to be able to sell other products. Engagement too, when you look at a Coinbase and Robinhood, that can sometimes rely on things like crypto prices or meme stock action. So where do they have to go from here? How do they have to expand their business? That's a great question. So I think two separate answers, one for Coinbase specifically, they need to go deeper into say more institution, you know, institutional um, Bitcoin, more um, NFTs, et cetera. That's what's going to get them, you know, kind of like that uh, deeper engagement with the consumer. For Robinhood specifically, and that's been the promise, but also the issue, the big kind of promise for Robinhood is the kind of one-stop shop bank. And if they can actually do this, this is going to be a home run. But I think there's still a show me here and a wait and see because they haven't, they haven't delivered yet on that. So that's kind of the cross-selling you're talking about. If they do it, it's going to be very, very successful. But the onus is on them to actually prove that they can do it. I think my question is, I, I buy that about Robinhood, right? You want to build a new kind of bank, build a new kind of financial behavior, especially with young people. Is Coinbase making the same promise? right? Because Coinbase is really pretty coupled to the price of crypto. That's where the energy in the crypto markets come from. What does Coinbase need to build to decouple itself from that volatility? You know, they need to actually, this is a, you know, this is the, the, the main issue that you're hitting. Uh, they are all about fee-based trading, right? And, and I think what's happening to them is that you're getting companies like Square, called BlockNow, et cetera, we're basically saying we're going to decentralize everything and we're going to make everything free. So their business model is challenged. So where do they need to go? They probably need to go deeper into where the other guys are and maybe start offering more products like lending or banking products, which is kind of what Robinhood is doing, what Square or Block is doing. So they need to go, if they're being, on, they're being attacked on the fees, they have to go and counterattack on the banking side. So in my view, if they actually start becoming more of a bank, um, because the app is very popular and you can leverage it to giving uh, loans, mortgages, et cetera. So kind of being a mix between you know, Robinhood, Square, and say like a SoFi, that could be good for Coinbase, but I'm not seeing progress there. You know, it's interesting, Dan, you mentioned that, uh, and, and fees in general, I wonder, we've been talking about deflation in financial services for so long, uh, but we've reached this point where it's zero commissions everywhere, and the models are getting their revenue from things like payment for order flow, in some cases, the lion's share of their revenue. I wonder, do you think that means that we've sort of bottomed out in deflation uh, in, in financial services overall? It, it's a good question. I mean, it, I don't know the, you know, I don't know where it's headed, but I think that at the end of the day, if you think about, you know, three years from now, everything that's fee-based right now, like crypto trading is going to be free. So I, I actually think that the Robinhood model is more sustainable than the Coinbase model because they're already offering it for free. Now mm -hmm. there's an issue with, uh, pay, pay for order flow, et cetera. Like we don't know where it's headed, but charging these very high fees from the consumer is very dangerous because at the end of the day, it's all going to be free. So I think there's more convergence and, you know, it's just like, you know, yeah. the TD Ameritrade of the world or the clubs, the fees are going to be almost zero at the end of the day. And that's, you know, my view.